So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this video and I'm going to show you how to do an analysis of a response surface type design using Minitab. Um, I'm going to show you how to upload a macro that's going to do it for you and then I'm going to show you exactly how to use it. Uh, what you see in front of you here is problem number one from our homework. Um, you can see that we have two factors. X1 is temperature, X2 is pressure. Um, if you take a look at the way things are set up with this design, it is a two to the two factorial with axial points and five center points. The axial points are at um, alpha equal to 1.414, which is actually the square root of two. What that basically means is this design is spherical because all the points lie square root of two distance from the center and it's also rotatable. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this design, copy it into Minitab, and then I'm gonna show you how to read this in as a custom design. So let's head over to Minitab now. Okay, so we're in Minitab now. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna copy our design in. Now I'm going to change it so my view is basically just the data. Makes things a little bit easier. Now, in order to add this in as a custom design, we need to have a point type column. We weren't as worried about that earlier when everything was plus one, minus one, but once you start adding center points, you start adding axial points, we need to have a column that tells Minitab which are what points. So I'm gonna create a column here. I'm gonna call it point type. For each axial point, or excuse me, for each factorial point, I'm gonna give this a one. For each axial point, I'll give it a negative one. And for each center point, I'll give it a zero. Okay, now we're gonna read this into Minitab. We're gonna to go to stat DOE. Now, instead of using factorial, we're now gonna use response surface. We're gonna do define custom. Notice this really isn't that much different than the factorial. You have create response surface, you have define custom response surface. We're gonna define a custom response surface. Okay, so now it's looking for continuous factors and categorical factors. We're gonna put these into continuous factors. I'm gonna put X1 and X2. Now we're gonna click low high. Okay, so you can see we have our negative square root of two, square root of two as our low and high. Um, now, whether the data is coded or not becomes critically important because if you put uncoded, Minitab is going to recode everything so the high and the lows are minus one and one, and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here and say that this is coded. Click OK. Now click Designs. Now notice here we have the same things we had before. What becomes critical now is point type column. We're going to click on Specify Column. And then I'm going to put point type in there. And now I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to click OK again. And notice what it's done is it's created a standard order column, a run order column, and a block column. Okay, now at this point, we're gonna do our analysis of what we can do with Minitab proper. So I'm gonna go up here to stat. I'm gonna go to DOE. I'm gonna go to response surface. And then I'm gonna go to analyze response surface design. Okay, so this looks like our typical analysis box. Put Y in the response, click on terms. Now remember, because we're dealing with response surface now, we're not gonna worry about model reduction. So we should have all our terms here. Notice we also have the squared terms along with our interaction term. Click okay. Now we have a lot of our other um, things where we could look at residuals and we could look at some different things. What I want you to do is go to storage and then check coefficients because we're going to need those coefficients in a little while. Click OK. Then click OK. Now, what you're going to see here is you're going to see the um, coefficient table like we normally do, model summary with R's and R squares and things like that, our ANOVA table, okay, um, our regression equation, and you know, the typical things that we see. So, what we really want to do here is we want to get an idea of what the surface looks like. Now, once we have this analysis, what you have to remember is we're actually looking for, um, you know, the set of 
corresponding x1 and x2 that will minimize our response. Okay, there's a couple of ways we can go from here to get there. One of the things we can do is we can look at contour plots and see what this looks like. And we will do that by going stat, DOE, response surface, contour plot. Okay, my response is Y. I have my X and my Y axes. Go to contours. Um, I myself like to use contour lines in symbols at the design points, and you'll see why in a minute. Click OK. There are other options here if you want to put a title and things like that. Click OK. And now you can see we have this um, contour plot of the surface. And it basically kind of looks like as you go from the upper left to the lower right, the response is going down. So our minimum is somewhere down here. So we have this contour plot, but from the plot you really can't tell where the minimum is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use that canonical analysis to figure this stuff out. And in order to be able to do that, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use the macro. So let's go take a look at how we can bring the macro in. So here I am in my um, Windows Explorer. What you're going to have to do is go into your computer and find this Program Files Mini Tab Mini Tab 19 English Macros folder. And then once you get to that folder, take the Canon RSM.Mac from my courses and copy it into this folder. Once you have it copied into this folder, we can now use it in Minitab. Okay, let's go see how it works. Okay, we're back here to Minitab. Remember how I had you store the coefficients? That's going to come in handy in a sec. So come over here to the right where it says Command Line. And in order to use our macro, we're going to type percent canon rsm semicolon then we're going to write coef and then we're going to find the column where you put the coefficients which is c8 and now we're going to write period and this is basically it okay so now you're going to go down click run now what's happened here is um th there's a macro running our, gives us our n factorial type, it's a 2 to the 2. Um, this gives us our linear coefficients. This gives us our matrix of quadratic coefficients. So we've got our beta 1, 1, beta 2, 2, and then the uh, beta 1, 2 here. Okay, the stuff that we need is coming now. So the stationary point, so the, the y at the stationary point is minus 20. The distance from the center to the stationary point is 51, okay? The stationary point values for x1 is 32, and for x2 is negative 40, okay? Now, we can go back up to this contour plot and realize that um, a distance of 51 is way outside of our experimental region, which tells us that this stationary point probably isn't of much use. Okay, if we come here, we can see that um, we do have somewhat of a minimum, but it's actually going to end up being some sort of a, um, a stationary ridge. So we're going to have to do something else to try to figure out what the minimum inside the experimental region is. And we will use a solver in Excel to do that. And I, I will show you how to do that next. So what we're going to do here is to optimize our situation, we're going to use a, the solver function in Excel. So in order to enable it, go to File, go down to Options, go down to Add-ins, Excel Add-ins, click Go, and then make sure Solver is checked. And when you go to the Data tab, you should see Solver over here. Okay, so we're going to have to prepare this so we can use Solver here. First thing we're going to have to do is bring in our coefficients. I've got a, something set up already for that. I brought them in, and this is from my mini tab um, column coefficients. Now, notice I've got a col I've got a output for a, b, y the response, and then r the radius. Okay. Essentially, what we're going to do here is we're going to let mini or let Excel vary a, b. Okay under the, a certain assumption for R, 
until it minimizes the response. So you've got our cell for A, our cell for B. Those are going to be left empty. Now, when we come to Y, what we need to do with Y is we need to create the model, a formula for the model within the cell. So A8, which is the uh, intercept, plus A9, which is beta 1 times A. A10, which is beta 2 times B. A11, which is beta 1, 1 times A squared, and so on and so on. So you need to make sure you get the full formula in there. Okay. Now, the reason that you're getting 41.2 and it matches the coefficient here is because right now in A and B, those are zeros. And if we use zeros for all of them, it basically eliminates everything but the, the intercept. Okay, that's one way to check to see if you've got this in there correctly. Now, let's click on the radius piece. What do we know about the rate? This stands for the radius of inference. So what this is basically telling you is this is the value that the AB point lies from the center, okay? F5 squared, which is A, G5 squared, which is B squared. Sum those up, take the square root. So that's the distance that point lies from the center, okay? So now we have our AB, we have our response, we have our radius. What we're going to do is we're going to click Solver, okay? Now... We're going to set our objective. Click on objective. That's going to be our response. Okay. Where we, we want to actually minimize that objective. Okay. We're going to do that by changing the cells A and B. Okay. And the final thing that we want here. is we want to add in a constraint and we want that constraint to be that R has to be less than or equal to our radius of inference, which at this case is 1.414, okay? That's the only constraint we need. Now, you might be thinking, well, don't you have to put in that A has to be less than this and greater than that or B? No, the radius takes care of all of that okay now that we have these things in objective is y we want to minimize changing variables a and b we also want to make sure the radius of inference or the distance is less than the radius of inference which is 1.414 now click solve okay and let's say keep solver solution so what this tells us is to find the minimum we need to use A at 0.925 and B at negative 1.069. That gives us a minimum response of 37.87 at the furthest radius, okay? Now, let's try one more thing because we had another thing that we wanted. Let's see if it can find what gives us close to 46. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the solver, okay? Instead of saying min or max, I'm gonna say value of I'm going to put in 46. Constraint stays the same. Everything else the same. Let's click Solve. OK. Click OK. Now this tells us to get a value of 46. We need A to be equal to 1.185. B to be 0 0.2109. That gives us Y equal to 46. And that is a distance of 1.204, which, of course, is less than 1.414. So what we've seen here is two instances on how you can use the Excel solver to find minimums, maximums, or find the values for A and B, which give you a certain Y.